Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head down to Australia once again and we're going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel a couple of times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the last little while. They're a brewery that I only recently came into contact with and we've had a few different styles from them and they've always been pretty damn solid actually. So this is a brewery that I do keep an eye out for. But the beer that we're going to have a look at today is a style that I have had from this brewery before, a style that I know they do very well, and this is also one of their latest releases up here in Hong Kong as well. So needless to say, I'm very, very curious to see what this beer is going to have in store for us. Hopefully it's another good one, hopefully it makes for an interesting review, and as always, I hope that you guys watching enjoy my take on this one as well. So yeah, for this review then, we are going to head to Australia, like I said, we are going to go to the state of Queensland, the city of Brisbane, and to be specific, we are going to go to the district of Newstead in the centre of the city. But that means that we're going to have a look at another beer from the wonderful Range Brewing, and this particular beer is called Hard Maybe. So this one comes in at 8.8% EVV. It's a New England hazy, imperial double, whatever you want to call it, IPA. And this one actually has a really interesting hop bill in it. It's got a hop in it that I have never encountered before. So we'll come to that a little bit later in the video. But I've heard very good things about this one. So as I said earlier, I'm quite curious to see what it's gonna have in store for us. If memory serves me correctly, this is a beer that I picked up at City Super here in Hong Kong and they seem to get a decent variety of interesting craft beers from uh, Japan and Australia and New Zealand and stuff like this so I always make sure to pop in and just have a little look at what they've got and I think this one cost me somewhere in the region of like 100 Hong Kong dollars so 10 pounds sterling I don't know what that is in Aussie dollars but yeah that's the kind of standard you'll pay for an import uh, New England double IPA potentially a little bit more depending on where it's from but uh, yeah let's crack on with this one then and see what it's got in store for us the hard maybe from Range Brewing in Newstead, Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. So, uh, as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting though, just fast forward, all the usual links can be found in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Range Brewing before, and we will no doubt add more to that list at some point in the fairly near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The support that you give is massively appreciated. And remember, you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer using the geography tagging system. So just go in there, use the little search bar, put your hometown, state, county, province, whatever you like. If I've reviewed beers from the area that you search for they will pop up failing that you can check out the playlist of beers from different countries you'll find this one in the Australian playlist along with a number of other things that's being added to quite regularly now that I'm in Hong Kong because we do get a good selection of Aussie stuff over here and uh, yeah do make sure you check out the playlist of beers from other countries as well because there are some very interesting things on the channel these days but yeah let's go on to my brewery notes then and I'll tell you a wee bit about range brewing once again then so uh, Range Brewing, as I've told you already, are based in the Newstead district of central Brisbane in Queensland down in Australia and the company was founded back in 2017 by Matt McIver and Gerard Martin who were joined soon after by Mitch Pickford. So the two original guys are childhood friends and they lived abroad in London. Matt was working for Brewdog in Soho and was also the brand manager of the London Craft Beer Festival. Gerard on the other hand is an engineer by trade and he worked in mechanical and manufacturing engineering but in London he was working for Vitzo, uh, which I can't remember, they're some kind of, uh, I'm sure they're involved in finance and like industrial engineering and stuff like that, if I'm not mistaken. But apparently the idea to start their own brewery at came after having a few too many beers, which will happen quite often, of course, if you're into your craft beer. But they wanted to be able to travel and sample the best beers in the world and then to brew their own versions of these. So Matt and Gerard contacted their friend Mitch, who also happened to be a talented brewer, and he was working for Catchment Brewing in Brisbane but he was of course interested to get on board with their venture and soon Matt and Gerard were back at home in Queensland building their own brewery. So originally they'd planned to start the brewery in their hometown of Toowoomba but they decided that it wasn't the best fit and so they decided to move east to Brisbane. Toowoomba is a very nice town incidentally so go and visit it. But the brewery opened in early 2018 in an old warehouse in the Newstead district where they also have an on-site tap room and they sell pizzas as well which I have to say look pretty good if you look at the website. But over the years they've expanded 
expanded the brewery infrastructure and in 2022 they opened a second tap room in the Abbotsford area in Melbourne which also acts as their southern distribution hub but until 2022 they didn't actually have a core range of beers but at this point they introduced Disco as their first forever beer, as they were calling it. I think there have been a few more added to that over time, if I'm not mistaken. But as of July 2024, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced 680 different kinds of beer, according to Untapped. But yeah, that is everything I can really tell you about range brewing for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done so yeah let's go on and actually have a little look at the beer itself so i'll let you have a wee look at the artwork on this one before we open it up so you can see this one is a 440 milliliter can but you can see there is the range symbol on the top of that you'll find that on most of the beers plain silver top on it as well actually but uh yeah label on this one a wee bit different from what we've seen with range before but as i say we haven't tried too many beers from these guys to really comment on that too much but i quite like the artwork on this one i have to say the can is sweating a little bit due to the humidity that we're having in hong kong during the summer it's getting tiring in all honesty but uh yeah the um appearance of this one on the artwork it looks very very nice so yeah um it tells you on the side here a hazy double ipa dry hot with citra lupo max Simcoe Cryo, Citra Galaxy, Manalita, and Simcoe. So we know all of these hops pretty well except Manalita. So Citra is of course 14% alpha acid American. It's going to give you that lovely big smooth mango kind of note to it and also quite a little bit of a lemon limey character. In the New England IPAs, you've got Simcoe, which is going to give you that lovely sort of passion fruity note as well. Lovely soft passion fruit, maybe a bit of mango and apricot and stuff like that too. Galaxy is, of course, the Australian hop, 14% uh, alpha acid, if I'm not mistaken. Good little bit of grapefruit, quite a little bit of like passion fruit, but mostly I think pineapple and mango as well are quite pungent with that one. But Manalita, I actually did a little bit of research on, because as I say, I had never encountered this hop before. So Manalita uh, was released by Freestyle Hops in New Zealand. It was first released in 2023. It's got an alpha acid content of about 8% ABV, and it's supposed to give you uh, flavours of red grapefruit and papaya. So should be quite an interesting one. But like we said earlier, 8.8%. New England Hazy Imperial Double, whatever you want to call it, IPA. Uh, yeah, this should be really quite nice, actually. So let's get this guy out into the glass and see how we go. The hard maybe from uh, Range Brewing in Newstead, Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. So there we go. This one is pretty fresh as well, actually. I think it's about two months old in the can, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, let me just see. It says best before 27th of the 3rd, 2025. So yeah, it's probably got about nine months on the can or something like that. Not 100% sure, but we'll see. Anyway, so you can see this beer has poured pretty much as you would expect of a New England IPA. So you can see the uh, head on this beer. Um, it's got, it's poured with quite a soapy, bumpy head actually. If you look at that, I'll bring it up to the camera so that you can see. Um, there you can see there's some medium sized bubbles on the liquid on the surface of the liquid there and it goes up and it's a little bit more kind of soapy and bumpy and things like that but uh, yeah the color of this one it's a lovely kind of bright yellow uh, mango juice color i would say so um yeah the mango juice color of this one i always like comparing new england ips to different fruit juices because that's just what they remind me of but remember the color of your beer depends on a few things one the type of malts that you use that goes a long way to determining your ebc rating two length of your wort boil is going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort the more the sugars caramelize and thus you get a darker color of beer but any bad aging you do or adjuncts you put into the beer will affect its color as well but uh, yeah, you don't often have to care about that when it comes to any kind of IPA, to be honest with you. But uh, yeah, level of haze in this one, for an 8.8 percenter, mm, it's, um, yeah, it's not bad actually, but it's not the soupiest and gloopiest of New England IPAs that I've come across. So remember, the level of haze in these beers depends largely on the oak content, wheat content, and to a degree what yeast you use. That can vary from brewery to brewery and beer to beer. But uh, yeah, this one, as I say, it's, a, it's about right, but it's not the soupiest and gloopiest of um, New England's that I've come across at this 
um, ABV. So yeah, it looks the part, this one, not too much in the way of visible carbonation. The head has just faded away a little bit. I don't think we really need to say too much more about the, uh, the appearance of this one. So let's move on and have a little look at the aroma of the beer before we give it a try. So let's do it. Yeah, aroma-wise, I have to say this one smells pretty nice. Um, so for me, it's kind of what you'd expect of the style, to be honest with you. You've got that lovely big malty backbone, you've got the juicy fruity character in there, and the nice bright green component. But um, yeah, for me, um, as I've often said in, in New England reviews, there are six different things to think about when it comes to the malty and yeasty side of these beers. So you've got the more kind of yeasty, grainy side of things, uh, of course, or the farmhouse yeasty side of things, I should say, you've got the more rye leaning grainy side of things as well. Those two components are a bit more prominent in American brewed New England IPAs in my experience, but then you've got the wheaty bitiness, the barley malt bread, the oaty creaminess, and also the sweeter side of things as well. Now, for me, um, I noticed that on the ingredients list of this one, it says barley and wheat. It doesn't say anything about oats. Um, I think I commented on this in the last range, um, review that I did actually come to think of it but yeah with this one it does come across in the aroma as being more kind of like barley malty and the wheat is in there as well it doesn't come across as being overly like smooth and creamy in all honesty so yeah I'm wondering if this beer does have oats in it at all that's an interesting point to make about it um I would have thought they would mention that. I'm sure we'll be able to tell a bit more from the taste, but yeah, you can smell on the malt base of this one, it's got a little bit more of a kind of bite to it and that big bready character. So uh, yeah, the other thing you have to remember when it comes to wheat and oats and things like that is they smell a bit different and they taste a little bit different as well, depending on where they're from. European oats, for example, are a bit more creamy. American oats are a bit more porridgey. Um, you know, European wheat, is a little bit more bitey, whereas Amer uh, North American wheat, I should say more generally, is um, a little bit smoother, in all honesty. And the Australians, of course, they've got a lot of arable land, they'll be growing a lot of their own stuff, so it will be different again, you know, different water profiles, different soil profiles, it's chemistry. So, yeah, that's something to think about when you're uh, always looking at these beers, because you will notice little nuances in beers from different countries and different regions and stuff like this. So, yeah. Um, Let's just break this aroma down though and describe it for you a wee bit more in depth. So the backbone of the beer for me in this one is of course that soft, white bready, bread crusty character there. You can smell that right away. There's a little bit of cracker in this one and a little bit of woody character, you know, Jacob's Cream Cracker. Quite a little bit of that coming out. Um, a little bit of woodiness, like I said. And then on top of that, you get a little touch of brown bread to this one, but not overly much in all honesty. Lots of fluffy white bread for sure. And then yeah, above that, you have, above that, you've got that nice, wheaty, bitey sort of thing coming out of the, um, out of the beer. So particularly at the back of the nose, you're gonna get a lot of that big, wheaty, bitey character coming out of it. So yeah, as I say, as I suspected when I first took a whiff of it and looking at the ingredients, I don't think this beer is too heavy in its oats if there are any in there at all actually because it doesn't have such a big oaty creamy character to it and one of the things with New England IPAs is this, that if there's oats in it you can usually um, tell like how, uh, how fresh your beer is because you know the creamier the oats are the fresher the beer is the older they are the drier the aroma is and things like that so with this one you don't really get that there's maybe a little bit of an oaty type aroma to this one in the uh, middle of the nose but um yeah the way it goes together is um it's really nice in this one so yeah for me the um the aroma that comes out of this, I think, is um, is really, really nice. So yeah, on top of that kind of wheaty bitiness in there, um, I would say there's a little bit of like Werther's Original Butter Candy Butterscotch, uh, and you do have a little touch of like a McVitie's Digestive Biscuit, you know, out of this one, but um, overall, the character of this one, um, I think it's uh, 
is more of like, yeah, wheaty and bitey, definitely. In the back of the nose, you do get a little bit of the yeasty character coming out of this one. Um, there's, yeah, there's a little bit of brown bready character, and there's a little bit of white bready character, and there's also a bit of a, uh, a crackery sort of note in this one. But um, yeah, I think the way that goes together is um, is really quite nice. I think this is going to be quite a big bitey uh, New England double IPA. So yeah, for me, green component with this one. Um, for me, the green component, I would say, is very, very bright. And as we've talked about in many IPA reviews before, there are three different types of hoppings to think about with these beers. You've got early edition hopping, which takes place within the first hour of the wort boil. That gives you mainly bitterness. You've got late uh, edition hopping, which uh, takes place in the latter half hour of the wort boil. That gives you a little bit of bitterness, but mainly flavour aroma, and it's going to give you a, um, a, a kind of brighter green component in terms of flavour and aroma as well. You've got dry hopping, which takes place after the wort boil is complete, and that gives you pretty much all flavour and aroma, and again, it's going to give you a very bright green component. But, um, yeah, the way that that all goes together, I think, in this one is, is quite interesting uh, because it's a very, very bright green component in this one. It's not even got really any real dankness to it. So remember, New England IPAs rely on late edition and dry hopping. West Coast IPAs use all three, which is why they are deeper, danker, and more bitter. So, um, yeah, the way that that goes together in this one, I think, is, uh, is very, very nice. So, um... The green component with this one for me, there's a little touch of earthiness to this one, but not overly much. Your green component is actually very um, spicy and floral and aromatic. I don't find it overly oily, which is interesting considering that there's um, Lupo Max and Cryo in here, because normally they give you this big oily sort of smooth component to your the, the green side of things. But I'm wondering if that is because of the... Um, if, because it's just wheat that's in this. Maybe it's a bit more pronounced when you've got oats in there as well. And um, so you have to kind of think about the whole chemistry of this thing, not just one or two different aspects. And that's one of the interesting things about brewing beer, of course. But yeah, um, you've got a nice little bit of grassiness in there as well, grassy zesty carrot. And I think out of the hops in this one, it is most likely to come from the uh, different types of citra that are in there. But yeah, um, let's have a little look at the fruity side of things then, just to round off the uh, aroma section of this beer then so for me tropical it's very tropical leaning this one as you'd expect so you definitely can smell the papaya on this one that's the thing that's going to stick out of this one to me because it's Man manalita you know simcoe galaxy and citra we know all of these very very well um so yeah the way that all of that kind of pieces together i think is uh it's really really nice in this one so for me the um yeah for me the green component in this one um actually mellows out a bit more the more that you smell the beer so at the back of the nose you've got a nice little bit of uh, grapefruity character in there which would think you know as, as we said that's likely to come from the manalita and from the galaxy and the citra in this one but yeah there's quite a little bit of peachy character in there but not too much i would say lots of big juicy mango softer passion fruit lots of apricot as well of course and then that papaya character coming out from the manalita and yeah um i don't know i think there's quite a bit of pineapple in there as well and the pineapple i think is most likely to come from the galaxy out of everything that's in here so um yeah the way everything goes together in this one i think is really pretty nice so another i've got the feeling we're going to get another very very solid beer from range brewing here so as i always say take a little bit of time to enjoy that aroma before you get stuck into the beer but i think it's about time for us to try this one and see what it's all about so yeah this one is the hard maybe an 8.8% New England Hazy, Imperial Double, whatever you want to call it, IPA, from the wonderful Range Brewing in Newstead, Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. Let's get stuck in. Slanja, Skoll, cheers. Yeah. The way this one goes together is really nice actually. And I will say, this the thing that surprises me about this 
is that it does actually show quite a little bit of oaty character to it in the uh, in the flavour. So that's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, this is one of these beers, you know, the fruity side of the beer is kind of what you'd expect, the green component's what you'd expect, but the yeasty and malty side of this beer diverge quite a bit with what you would predict um, after having looked at the aroma. So, yeah, that's really not what I expected with this one, uh, in all honesty. But um, another very, very good beer from Range Brewing, and, uh, you know, these guys are pretty damn solid. I know my good friend uh, Sam, over at Short and Stout Beer Reviews, he thinks quite highly of these guys and uh, enjoys their beers as well. So make sure you check out his channel, by the way. I think I forgot to say that earlier. Make sure you go and give him some love. The link will be in the description below. But um, yeah, the um, the whole way this beer goes together, I think, is very, very nice. So big, big thumbs up to uh, Range Brewing once again with this one. I think I'm going to just turn the level of that light down a wee bit again. Hmm. We're playing with it. We're playing with it. Uh, there we go. I've got lots of different colours here. That's interesting. There we go. So I think that's a little bit better in honesty. No, I was pressing the wrong button. That's what we wanted. We wanted that better level of light. <sighs> Playing around with it sometimes, of course, guys. But um, yeah, let's break the flavour of this beer down then and describe it for you a wee bit more in depth. So yeah. The backbone of this beer, for me, the if you go to the middle third of your palate then, the backbone of the beer is that lovely, smooth, fresh, white bready bread crust in there. So that comes out of this one uh, and just sits there. Um, as you move further forward on that middle third of your palate, you get that nice little touch of woodiness there. Then as you move above that, you get just a little touch of cracker, and the cracker, I think, comes out a little bit further back on the palate. Remember that sweeter flavours come out further forward, more dry and bitter flavours come out further back on the palate, so bear that in mind. But then, yeah, above the cracker in this one, you've got a layer of that wholemeal brown bready sort of character in there. And the brown bready note in this one, it's, it's not too tall, but it's actually quite smooth and quite sweet. Yeah, it's actually really smooth and quite sweet, this one. Then above that, you get the white bread, you know, and the white bread as well in this one. Again, it's quite dense and quite sweet, and that's the barley malt character. We've not even got to the wheaty side of the white bread. But yeah, the white bready notes in this one are really nice as well. And then above that, you have, you can feel that even more dense white bready layer coming out of this one, which is, of course, uh, that is, of course, the uh, the wheaty side of the beer. Um, and that's the thing, I'm not sure exactly how old this beer is. It could well be about three months old at the time of uh, filming. So, yeah, maybe this beer, the bready side of the beer, feels a little bit different and it's kind of thickened up a wee bit as a result of the, the age of the beer. But it still feels pretty, strong, like, pretty good and pretty fresh, in all honesty. But there is something that's telling me... Um, there is a bit of oat in this beer, and there is just a little bit of dryness to the oat, so that's making me, making me think, pardon me, maybe this beer is about three months old, but like I say, this one is not overly oat heavy, it is quite wheaty leaning, I would stick with that, but yeah, um, the way that some of these flavours come out is quite different, so yeah, you can feel that dense, white bready uh, character out of this one, and then yeah, um, on top of that wheaty layer, you can feel down the middle line of your palate there, you've got a nice little bit of an oaty, creamy character uh, coming out of it. So yeah, lovely big oaty, creamy sort of note with this one, and as you move further out toward the edges uh, of the palate, you get a little bit of dryness out of it, but in the dead centre of the palate, there's a wee bit of a Werther's Original Butter Candy, Butter Scotchy sort of thing coming out of this one. So uh, yeah, the way that all of that pieces together in this one is quite nice. So you've got that little bit of boozy sweetness in there in the middle, and then maybe just a little bit of a McVitie's digestive biscuity character um, when you push further out toward the edges of your palate there. But all in all, um, really nicely done in that middle third of the palate, of course. I do really like this one, actually. This is one that I feel is just a bit more striking in comparison to some of the others. It might just be because it's a bit sweeter, of course. But yeah, let's go to the back third of the palate then. So as I've often said, middle third of the palate and the back third of the palate 
in this one is quite uh, similar actually and quite often you'll find that you'll get the similar flavours just at different intensities but yeah border region between middle and back third of your palate you get a nice little bit of bready build up in there there's the um, a little bit of the brown bread in the base the white bread in the middle and then the more wheaty character on top the base of that back third of your palate you can feel you've got the white bready bread crust in there which is a little bit drier of course there's the Jacob's cream crackery note um, sitting on top of uh, of that and then above that you've got the more brown bready character in there which is uh, a little bit you know lighter more airy and slightly drier and things like that then above that you've got the more um lighter airy white bready sort of character in there from the barley malt and then above that of course you start to get the wheat and the wheat really is quite dense it's quite smooth and to a degree it's also quite uh, quite sweet so um yeah the way that all that goes together i think is uh, is really quite nice so above all of that of course you're getting the yeasty side of the beer so let's just have a little look at that yeasty component so yeah um so yeah the yeasty side of the beer for me um Well, the yeasty side of the beer for me, in the middle of it, you've got that dense, sweet, brown bready sort of thing. Then around the edge, you have a little bit of um, a more dense white bready character out of this one. And then around the very, very edge, um, around the very edge of that, you have the um, yeah, you have the more dense, um, like you've got a little bit of more kind of bread crusty, crackery sort of thing in there. But yeah. At the back of that third of the front, at the, on the back third of the palate there, you've got that, uh, the, the flavour is a bit taller. Then as you move further forward into the, the middle third of your palate, it condenses down and squashes together that little bit more. So yeah, for me, the, um, yeah, for me, the, the, this beer shows you a little bit more yeasty character into its aftertaste as well so that's definitely worth bearing in mind the other thing i would say about this beer is as well that the more you drink of it the more you can feel the smoothness of the lupo max and the cryo in this one these are of course hop extracts where they basically you know you've not got any of the green part of it anymore you're just taking the pure oil out of the, the hop plant of course that's essentially it but yeah in the back corners of the palate on the green component then there's a little hint of earthiness there and as you move further forward there's a little hint of herbal character but yeah as you push further forward along the sides of the palate there you've got that nice floral aromatic character out of this one's got a little bit of oiliness to it but it's also got that little bit of a more bitey uh bitter it's got a little bit more of that kind of bitey bitter spicy sort of thing out of it but around the front curve of the tongue it's a little bit lighter and more grassy of course but again that that around the front parts of your tongue it really is more oily rather than anything else so <clears throat> i do like how all of that pieces together actually so um yeah interesting from that perspective but yeah let's look at the front third of your palate then and the fruity side of things so yeah for me the border region between middle and uh, front third of your palate. You've got a nice little bit of brown bread in the base, the white bread in the middle, and then the uh, wheaty character on top as well. Um, yeah, so the base of that front third of your palate there, um, yeah, the base of that front third of your palate, you can feel you've got a little bit of a bread crusty note in there underneath. You've got the cracker, the sweet brown bread, the white bread, and then the little bit of a, uh, of a wheaty sort of thing in there as well so you can feel that smoother wheaty character there but then above that you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer as i say the way that all of that goes together i think is uh, is really really nice in this one so um yeah let's look at the fruity side of the beer then i'm very curious about this of course so yeah the fruity side of this one as you kind of expect it's very tropical leaning. All four of the hops in this one, of course, are pretty tropical leaning. But yeah, the back of that, um, yeah, the back of that um, front third of your palate, you do get that little bit of a, 
I would say there's a little bit of a more in, kind of intense grapefruit there. But it's not too pungent, if that makes sense. You can feel it's an intense flavour, but it's not madly pungent. So, yeah. The way that that goes together in this one is quite... Uh, is quite interesting so yeah for the i think that's going to be from citra galaxy and the manolita in this one but yeah as you move further forward from that there is a little bit of that peachy sharpness there and that lingers into the aftertaste a little bit lots and lots of um yeah lots and lots of kind of juicy juicy mango in this one absolutely then as you move further forward from that you're getting toward the middle of that front third of your palate now you get more of a soft passion fruit there and then as you move right into the dead center of that front third of your tongue it's all about the soft passion fruity characters uh just kind of coming out of this one so yeah the way that all of that sort of pieces together i think is uh, is really really nice in this one um yeah i think the way that this yeah the way that this beer goes together i think is very very nice so yeah for me there's maybe just a little touch of a lemon limey kind of character behind the very front tip of your tongue but yeah the front half of that front third of your tongue is all about the soft papaya and there's maybe a little bit of pineapple sitting on top of that as well which will come from the galaxy rather than anything else but yeah the way these fruity characters come out of this beer is really nice and this is one that's kind of grown on me a little bit more the more that i've drank of it um so yeah this one i do like that actually so big thumbs up to uh, to range brewing for this they've done a really nice job so yeah really good stuff from these guys once again need to keep an eye on what they're putting out of course but um yeah so for me the um the mouthfeel of this beer then um, I'd say overall, it's actually quite full-bodied, this one. I feel it gets thicker and thicker the more that I drink of it, but I'd say it's kind of bottom end of full-bodied. Carbonation is very, very smooth. It's got a lovely, I don't know if I'd quite call this one creamy. It's more, creamy is just not the right word. It's just like very thick, this one actually. This is one of the thickest New England uh, doubles that I've had in quite a wee while, in fact. But as I say, I wouldn't describe it as creamy because of the wheaty bite and the slight dryness that it has. But yeah, in terms of the IBU in this one, I think this is maybe 50 IBUs, potentially 60 at a push, but 50 or 60 seems quite reasonable. Um, in terms of the um, the malty side of the beer, you've got that nice kind of dry, you've got that nice sort of dry uh, bread crusty character in there. You've got the crackery note in it. Um, of course, like we said, then you've got the smooth bready, so those are the drier elements, you've got the smoother and slightly sweet bready notes in there, and then you've got the more creamy, sweet character um, coming out of this one on top. You've got soft, fruity, juicy notes in this one, um, and then, yeah, a little bit more of a kind of pungenty, citrusy character, actually. You get more citrusy notes out of this beer into the aftertaste. But all in all, really, really solid beer, this one, and uh, definitely a nice addition to our range brewing reviews here on the channel as well. So definitely be recommending this one to Sam if he hasn't tried it already. But yeah, I think we can leave it at that for this one. This one was the Hard Maybe, an 8.8% uh, New England Double uh, Imperial, whatever you want to call it, Hazy IPA from the wonderful Range Brewing in Newstead. Uh, yeah, in Newstead. Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. I just had a bit of a brain fart there. I keep do I always have one at least in the videos these days. I'm just getting old. But yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Range Brewing as well. And we will no doubt return to these guys again at some point in the very near future. But until then, Slanjit, Skull, cheers. Check out my good friend Sam over at Short and Stout Beer Reviews as well. Check out my social media. Check out Range Brewing social media. And I'll catch you guys again later. Ciao just now.